All right, hi guys, welcome to another bowling analysis video. So uh, just a preface before we continue, this is like the third time or the fourth time I'm recording this exact same video. Because in the previous two times, uh, my OBS software actually hanged while recording mid-video, which uh, caused the video to be unprocessed. So I have to like re reinstall OBS and uh, the problem might persist. So let's keep my fingers crossed and hope this recording finally goes through, right? So yeah, but the benefit of uh, having re-watching the same clip so many times is that I've no noticed some things that I initially missed in my initial analysis. So that's the good thing. So today we'll be looking at a video of uh, Adam. So Adam is the brother of one of our earlier viewers submitted uh, video reviews, which is uh, Arif, also from Malaysia. So obviously Adam and Arif are brothers, so they're both from Malaysia, neighboring country. And they're actually both really good uh, two-handed bowlers because they've just started to end the bowling. According to Arif, he says uh, both he and his brother has been bowling for only two months. But yet, if you look at uh, Adam's fundamentals, right, he's even slightly ahead of his brother Arif. So uh, if we just look at you know, Adam's physical game, it's actually pretty good. So I will just play these videos on loop while I talk through it. So Adam has a five-step approach. So I have some notes here as we you know let the videos play. Okay, let me, uh, yeah. So Adam has a five-step approach. He, his his uh, ball placement timing is really good. We call it delayed ball placement timing. So, okay, let me bring up my Epic Pen 2. So uh, when we say delayed ball placement timing in context of like, uh, you know, if a Singapore coach talks about it, it usually means is that the, the, the placement, right, of the ball, uh, placement of the ball means when you start to the swing. When you move the ball, when you start the swing, happens after the bowler has so-called completed their second step. So you can see here, Adam has a five-step approach. So using Kinovia. So anyway, this video play is Kinovia. So a big shout out to Kinovia uh, video analysis software. It is a freeware. Uh, you can just Google for Kinovia and you can find their website. It's open source, it's freeware, you can download it for free. It's a great video analysis tool for coaches and for athletes as well if you're doing any self-analysis on your video because they're very advanced video scrubbing uh, tools. Like you can see here, this 60 FPS video, I can scrub it really smoothly. I can go and analyze it frame by frame whereby if I were in this video recorder, uh, I don't really get the benefit of that. You can see that it skips a lot of frames. But in Kinovia, it will be a lot smoother, right? Okay, um, so back to back to the video. So Adam has a five-step approach and we talk about delayed ball placement timing, right? So that means he takes his first step here, he takes his second step, right? So this is his second step, let's highlight in blue. And pay attention that he actually finishes his second step before he even moves his bowling ball. So take note here that he hasn't moved his bowling ball at all, right? Has not moved his bowling ball yet. And only after he completely places his second step here. So you see he lands his second step and then pay attention. He starts moving the ball into the his downswing, right? He starts this, we call this motion the ball placement. Places his ball into the swing. So that is at the end of the second step, which is also, you can talk about like beginning of third step, but it's more like after the second step finish. So the third step is like in midway. So usually in terms of timing, we call it the end of second step um, because it's not exactly at the beginning of the third step, right? You can see that his third step, this is his second step. And then his third step has started, but he hasn't moved the ball yet because his second step hasn't complete. So he lands his second step and his third step is actually midway before he starts moving his ball. So this is actually fantastic delayed ball placement timing. It's great for two-handers. One-handers can do this as well if you want a more compact swing. If you want to delay your uh the ball arriving at your feet yeah this is a good technique to have but uh, for two-handers this is really really essential it's really important i know there are a lot of two-handers out there who you know go by the conventional uh conventional ball placement timing but i see a lot of them have uh swing issues right where they have to like and momentum and they have timing issues with that kind of timing where they have to intentionally delay their swing their back swing or their, their body will subconsciously do some kind of delay that it pauses their backswing, pauses their, you know, their timing, or it has to speed up their feet in order to stay on time. 
with uh, in sync with their feet and then they go so he starts delete ball placement timing and uh, another thing to note is that his swing here so let's go by the notes again uh, okay we will, I'm gonna talk about his swing first so he has a very flexible shoulder and elbow as well he's able to keep his elbow totally straight while he goes into his downswing so this is I mean a really really great benefit but I understand that not all bowlers are able to do this I myself I don't have such flexible elbows as well as shoulders to be able to do this motion because uh, in order to do to fully extend the bowling elbow right on uh, the bowling elbow your left shoulder which is uh, here your left shoulder which is in front and your left hand the left shoulder has to be pretty flexible as well so you gotta have pretty flexible shoulder joints in order to fully extend the left hand to be at the bottom of the ball during the backswing so this takes a certain amount of flexibility and not not everyone is born with this degree of flexibility so i understand not 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 all two-handed bowlers are the same right because everybody's slightly different okay but he has the benefit of being so adam has the benefit of being able to keep his uh, elbow straight so he gets the full benefit of his whole the whole length of his arm for his arm swing so he can get his ball speed from his uh, fully extended bowling arm which is really really good okay so goes into the his back swing goes for a little bit of a skip step here you can see that his, uh, adam is actually airborne in this step um, not going to talk about more uh, much of the skip step and stuff like that because this kind of thing actually occurs naturally well, depends on the timing of that particular bowler. So it actually occurs pretty naturally. So he goes for a skip set, it's actually airborne here. So it is fourth and goes into his fifth, right? Slides and releases. So you can see here, obviously the, the bad thing is that he kind of trips as he goes into his slide. Um, this is, I believe Adam is using house shoes, if I'm not wrong. So uh, Adam and Arif, you can correct me if you're watching this video and you can comment. You can put in the comments, but I believe Adam is using house shoes because he doesn't seem to be able to get a good uh, good slide with the shoes. Like he tries to slide here and he kind of no get I, I think he actually manages to slide. Yeah, he does have a slide. But he actually pops up he pops up here as his hand tries to lift the bowling ball. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of pops up a little bit here. Okay. So those are things to work on later. I'll talk about the what are the things Adam needs to work on later. Uh, has uh, carries the ball well. So let's look at I think this video. Yeah. So this this in this video you can see how Adam holds his ball. I actually holds it really really good. Okay. Let's see whether we can zoom in. Uh, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and I'm gonna shift it here. Zoom in further. Okay, yes, so Kinovia is a fantastic software, it allows me to zoom in on videos whereby other video players don't. So this is really great. I love Kinovia. Okay, so Adam here has really, really good um, position. His hands are in a really good position to carry the ball. So what I mean by that is that his, you can see he had his uh, bowling ball weight, right? It's mostly, mostly resting here at the bottom of Adam's wrist. So this is really, really good. Because actually for a two-hander, right, the, the, because we're not using the thumb, so the challenge is staying under and behind the ball during the swing. So some two-handers will feel like they're losing control of the ball during the swing. That's why they can't get the ref rate or the accelerate or they're, able, they're not able to drive their ball forward. They lose power on release. Basically because they are not able to stay under the ball enough, either during the stance or during the swing. So by holding the ball this way, loading up the weight of the ball at the base of his wrist, uh, it gives you the best chance to be able to do that. Obviously, if you go even further, that's actually bad. So what will be bad is that if uh, Adam uh, no, overdoes this carry, right? If he has his ball weight resting on his wrist, which one of my uh, previous students actually was doing, uh, that's actually bad. Because in that way, when he starts his ball placement, uh, the ball actually moves from the forearm uh, I mean, if he's resting the ball on the forearm, it's actually bad. So because in that way, uh, the ball will move from the forearm to the wrist when you're moving the ball, and then you're going to get a secure grip with your fingers on the ball when you're, you know, when you're doing your arm swing. So that is bad. So what Adam is doing here is really good. And you can see his uh, non-bowling hand is uh, somewhat in front of the ball. So this is what uh, is good, but at the same time can be better. 
What I suggest Adam can improve on here is that his non bowling hand could be totally positioned in front of the bowling ball right here when it's covered by the bowling ball. You should position it in front with his fingers, uh, fingers of that uh, non bowling hand pointing downwards so that the fingers are pointing straight towards the fingers of his bowling hand. So like the fingers should be pointing downward whereby the fingers of his non-bowling hand are here. So for the non-bowling hand and the bowling hand, the fingers should be pointing towards each other. So I find that through you know, working with my students in uh, bowling and trying it myself, that this is one of the best hand positions to hold a bowling ball for a two-hander. Uh, why, why is this the best? Because I find that when I hold the ball in this way, during mid-swing or even the starting the swing, ending of the swing, any part of the swing, right, I feel very secure um, because my fingers, because my, my uh, non-bowling hand is in front of the ball, my bowling hand is right behind the ball. So I'm securing both uh, sides of the ball during the swing. And that gives me the most secure feeling. Because from how Adam is holding now, right, his fingers are pointing towards this side. And you notice that because his hand it's not like directly in front of the ball. This this part of the bowling ball, right, is not covered. Like the right side here of the bowling ball is not covered. So during the swing, you will actually have. I mean, uh, maybe Adam is used to it because he's been bowling this way for maybe one to one plus to two months. But if he actually ch changes it up, right, and try the you know the the placement of his uh, non bowling hand as I suggested, he might be able to feel more secure in his bowling swing because this way. The, you might feel like the bowling ball might actually leak out this way. Like you might lose control of the bowling ball this way during mid swing. And because of that, the bowler might be more like subconsciously swing a bit slower in order to have better control of the bowling ball. They might not be able to accelerate their ball during the swing because they have this feeling that if they accelerate, they're going to lose control of the ball. The ball is going to like drop to the right during mid swing. So this is why having that you know, offhand position directly in front of the ball, fingers pointing downwards is actually quite important. So that is something that you can improve on. Um, great hand position, holding the ball, uh, carries the ball around his stomach. Okay, so I missed this. So the thank thankful that I have my notes here. So let's uh, you can see that this placement. So the, in this case, I need to zoom out a little bit and uh, yeah. So zoom out a bit further. Okay, so this is clearer. So Adam Raishi is uh, holding his ball around his stomach level. So this is uh, more or less the, you no know, true experiments, through trial and error, I think this is like the ideal position to start the, to hold the bowling ball for a two-hander. Because if you're holding it a little bit too low, like let's say you're holding it at the hip level, right? Um, the problem is that you cannot have this hand position. That means you cannot have the bowling ball uh, weight resting at the base of the wrist because obviously our our wrist is not as flexible right because if you're holding it at hip level the shoulders would be more extended and your hand would be angled like down here right so if your wrist is angled down then the bowling ball will be resting in the front of your like your wrist instead of the back instead of the base of your wrist so you're not able to get this hand position if you're holding it too low and the other problem, if you're holding the ball a little bit too high, let's say you're holding the ball at chest level, then when you do your ball placement, right, you're swinging the ball a bit too high because it's above, it starts above your swing, then the, the bowler swing, in this case, like the swing starts high, right, then the bowler swing, the two-handed swing actually gets delayed because you are doing a longer swing, your swing is not as compact as what it should be. So you're spending more time in the swing and you have to like delay your feet timing in order to like keep up with your swing time. Because uh, as most people know, two-handers actually need to have, have really quick footwork during the last three step. As you can see in the earlier part of my video, Adam even goes airborne during the fourth to fifth step. Uh, like he does, he subconsciously does a skip step in order to make it fast enough. So yeah, so because of that quick footwork, we need to have a very compact, two-handers need to have a compact swing to keep up with the quick footwork in order to get that uh, desired ball speed. Okay, what's next? Let's refer to my notes again. Excellent straightening of your back swing. Yeah, we, we already talked about that. Uh, straight back during the stance gives him good weight transfer. Doesn't over lean. Okay, so I can talk about this using maybe, uh, I think this video. This video, it actually looks pretty good here. 
So we're gonna go. So he goes into his stun right before he walks, right? So talking about his back here, yeah, Adam has really uh, this is in blue because this is, this is actually something good. So Adam has a really really straight back. We can see it even from this angle, right? Really straight back during the stuns, which is really good because as he moves into his third step, right? We can see there is weight transfer. Really good. Yep. So as he moves from neutral position on his back, straight. Uh, upright position into when he's leaning forward when his ball swings down he's creating forward momentum so he creates forward momentum when his body leans down mainly because as your body leans down right from neutral you know, you're leaning down you're you're putting your weight in front then obviously when you put your weight in front you're gonna like uh, you're gonna feel yourself going forward right because you're, there's a weight imbalance so this weight imbalance going forward would help the bowler to generate momentum moving forward and his timing of his uh, upper body weight transfer is perfect as well so it takes one step two step he swings his ball and pay attention to when Adam actually moves his uh, upper body forward is when his ball starts to swing down so when his ball starts to swing down then Adam moves his upper body forward so this is actually really really good timing and as his ball continues to swing down so ball continues to swing down and Adam continues to move his upper body forward. So his upper body forward movement is in sync with his uh, the, the ball moving down. So it's in sync with the ball movement. As the ball moves down, the upper body moves forward. So this is like the best uh, the best example that I could show you in video of uh, like upper body weight transfer. We call this upper body weight transfer in terms of uh, in Singapore bowling and in Singapore coaching. So his upper body weight transfer is actually really really excellent and if we actually play a little bit further as he you know ball continues to swing down then he continues to transfer his weight forward so this is actually really really good upper body weight transfer really excellent like it's really good even some like bowlers that are you know, way more experienced than adam have problems with this uh this perfect exit with doing as a good weight transfer is what he's doing it's really it's really good yeah so this weight transfer is really good yeah he's able to keep his um, elbow straight at the back um anything else i'm missing uh doesn't over lean forward right so this is something that is actually difficult to teach as well so you can see that adam actually stops leaning forward right at this level so you can see he keeps his back at fixed at this uh axis at this spine tube uh, yeah, the westerners will call it science my tilt, so I guess I can use that as well. So he keeps his upper body at this spine tilt throughout the backswing when he reaches the top of his backswing and throughout his release. So you can see that as he goes into his release, he keeps the same the same level of spine tilt. Like it's parallel, right? These two lines are parallel. He keeps the same level of spine tilt into his release. So this is actually really good. Yes, he doesn't over lean forward. What I've seen some two-handers do is that they don't stop leaning forward. They overdo their upper body forward lean until they go like parallel with the ground, right? I've seen some two-handers like lean so far forward that they're going 90 degrees. Their upper body goes 90 degrees, which is like parallel to the floor. And why that's bad is because their eyes can only look at the foul line. So they're not able to use their eyes to like look up at the arrows because their head is actually like looking towards the floor, right? And obviously there's limited angle, there's limited flexibility in our necks. So even as your neck looks up, you might not be able to see the arrows or especially the break point. But in Adam's case, so because Adam actually keeps his upper body fixed at this level, he doesn't over the he doesn't overdo his spine tube. He can actually his eyes can easily see the target at the arrows, which is around here. And his eyes can actually look at his target at the break point, which is further down the lane there. Right? The break point is around this area, if I'm pointing at the opposite lane, but it's like slightly here. So let's let's zoom in a little bit more. Uh, maybe, yeah. Let's zoom in a little bit more because uh, some of you guys are looking at your using mobile phones, right, to watch my videos. So <laughs> I understand it's a little bit difficult if it's uh, that everything is too small. So Adam's eyes, because he doesn't overdo his, he doesn't overdo his spine tilt. His eyes can easily see his target at the arrows here, and he can his eyes can easily see his target at the break point here. So 
that means his eyes can visually still able to uh, have a full visual view of his target line, which is from the breakpoint through, through, through the arrows and to where it's releasing the ball at the foul line. So extremely good. So this, this part of his physical game is really, really good. So if no Adam's physical game is so good, then what does he need more, right? So first and foremost is uh, Adam actually needs more finishing position discipline. It's like I would, how, like, uh, how I would like to say it. Um, I might have some typo errors there. So let's just play. So you can see he, here that he... No, it isn't that discipline. He's moving, he's moving off. That he's, he's moving off his uh, balance after releasing the shot. In this third shot, is actually more disciplined here. But you can see that he moves up pretty... Okay. Yeah, he doesn't keep his balance arm up, right? So for some of the experienced bowlers, they will instantly notice this. And then we can see here in this other clip. So if we play... Yeah, he skips around, so it doesn't stay on balance, right? So that's something that Adam has to work on. Uh, so both Adam and Arif have to work on their finishing position discipline. Uh, it's common. It's a common thing for new bowlers because they haven't been grinding out a lot of drills. They they don't have a coach. You know, that's uh, no that's no um, like that keeps reminding them right to stay on balance after every shot. So uh, how they can do this is they have to do drills, uh, which I'll show you one of the drills that I'm doing, like sliding drills, one step drills. Uh, no, sliding drill is called one step drill foul line drills and three step drills and then they have to focus on keeping uh, their finishing position holding their finishing position and keeping a balanced finishing position at the foul line so what we're looking at here is that we're looking for uh, the balance arm to be straight here so and then for we're looking for the bowler to hold this finishing position at least for okay if you are a new bowler right what I would suggest is uh, you have to be strict on yourself to hold this finishing position right until your ball touches the pins you have to hold this finishing position here be stable balance until your ball touches the pins so that is uh, my advice for you know, students who are struggling with uh, with the discipline of like enforcing their finishing position because uh, especially when we coach kids right like kids who are like 10 years old um, 9 10 11 12 they you know they like to move around they are very hyperactive Right, so they, they don't have good uh, finishing position discipline. So that is uh, what we would we would force them to do. We would say we will force them that you have to stay balanced at the foul line until you see your ball touch the pins. And uh, over time, that actually gives them really good finishing position discipline because they've been you know, practicing that for like months and sometimes even like years, right, as they grow up, if they continue bowling. Right, so for bowlers like Arif and Adam, I would uh, tell them to be disciplined and enforce a rule whereby they have to hold their finishing position at the foul line. That means with the balance arm, uh, upright, straight and everything, uh, with the knee bend, with everything there, locked in position until they see their ball touch the pins. Only, uh, only when they see their ball go into the pocket, touch the pins and disappear beyond the pin deck, then they can stand up. So they, they can do this for like one to two months, right? or maybe just uh, one to two, maybe even a few weeks of if they're bowling very frequently until they are very sure that their foul line uh, finishing position discipline is really good and then they can they can gradually reduce it to you know, once their ball passes the arrows or goes midway down the lane then they are allowed to uh, they allow themselves to stand up from their finishing position. So why finishing position is really important is because it ensures that the bowler is stable during the release. So it gives the bowler good discipline. It ensures the bowler that it's stable during release, so that you know that uh, you're gonna do a good, you're gonna execute a good shot most of the time if you're able to stay on balance at the foul line uh, during release. Okay, so that's something to improve on. Uh, balance up position. No bowling hand in front of ball. I uh, I already talked about that. Okay, so what Adam can work on is he should tilt his upper body to the right a bit more. So it's more apparent in this clip, which uh, I will zoom out here. So I would fast forward to where, right before he starts his ball placement, right? Around here. So here, Adam has the good benefit of having his uh, upper body being very upright, correct? But uh, you should be keep your uh, spine tilt straight 
upper body upright but what I would suggest is uh, the bowlers need to tilt more to the right that means they need to have their head tilted to the right so he, he does have the benefit of having his bowling shoulder lower than his non-bowling shoulder which is good but he could benefit more for keeping his upper body to the right so the this is something that I've learned recently new as well so for some of the bowlers some of the viewers who are just hearing me say this right it's because as coach I find myself I'm improving as well right so when I uh, coach students in real life um, and when they have problems there are things that I we think through like both to the student and I we have ideas about it and then I think that okay what if you try this and then let's see if it helps and then this is something that I've tried with uh, students in real life whether one-handers or two-handers is that when I see them struggling to hold their finishing position when they're losing balance at the foul line I suggested to them how about you tilt your upper body a little bit more to the right and you try and keep your swing under your bowling shoulder so make sure you sort of like keep the, the bowling shoulder under the head, under your head during your approach. When you're going through your five-step approach, keep in mind to keep your upper body tilted to the right and keep your bowling shoulder under your head. So what I've seen, the result of that is that the bowlers are able to you know, be uh, hold their balance a lot better as they do their release and they can hold their balance at the foul line a lot better. So I'll just uh, forward a little bit. So imagine if Adam is able to keep his upper body tilted more to the, to the right, right? So for example here, let's say he's able to do this. When he swings, the key here is that uh, what Adam should do is he, sh he needs to keep his bowling shoulder under his head. So his bowling shoulder is now behind, but as we move forward a little bit more, okay, so at this point, the bowling shoulder is still behind the head, right? But as he goes into the downswing, ideally, the bowling shoulder has to stay under his head. But you can see here, right at this part, which uh, maybe I can zoom in, right, right at this part, you can see that his bowling shoulder is kind of get to the right of his head, right? The bowling shoulder is coming to the right. So it's no longer under his head. So during release, the for two-handers, right, it's actually good to keep your shoulder under your head as well. Actually, not just for two-handers, even for a one-hander, it's actually a good practice to have, to have your to keep your bowling shoulder under the head. So you can keep your bowling shoulder under the head. The benefit is that if I you know, move the, 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 the clip a little bit higher, so if you can keep your shoulder under your head during the downswing, you should be able to, your hand, because your shoulder is under the head, right? So the hand will be leaning inside. So if the hand leans inside, that means to, towards the left of the body, if the hand, hand leans towards the left of the body, it means that you'll be able to release your bowling ball a lot closer to your left feet. And I'm sure you know, a lot of experienced bowlers can, un can understand the benefit of releasing closer to, you, to your left leg. One thing is that you get better leverage because um, if you try and lift, so the one of the examples I used in another earlier video, right, is that let's say you're trying to lift a heavy weight for example you're trying to lift a couch right or a bit it's something heavy right so you can try positioning like your feet very far away from the from the heavy weight and lifting it or you can try to position your feet really close to the heavy weight and lift it so i'm i can almost guarantee like most 100 percent of the time or more than like definitely it's going to be true if your feet is closer to the weight it's easier to lift it just like you no know, uh, weight lifters, right? They try and lift a heavy weight. They obviously need to get their feet under the heavy weight. That's because uh, the there there are principles of physics at play here. So because it's like the seesaw or the swing theory, the closer you are to the fulcrum, because in this case the fulcrum is the the our sliding leg here is the fulcrum, which is the pivot point. The closer you are to your pivot point, uh, sorry, the closer the weight is to the pivot point. Um, the less effect the weight has whereby the further away the weight has from the pivot point because in this case in Adam's case his ball is further away right he lands his ball further away from his uh, sliding leg which is his pivot point so his the distance from his leg is this so you can see it's almost double the distance from the blue from that blue circle that I drew so since it's you know, the ball is further away the ball weight actually has a bigger if bigger effect on the body so since it has a bigger effect it tends to drag the body down a lot more and tends to drag so it causes the body to lose balance a lot easier than 
if you are able to have your ball release a lot closer to your left feet because you're minimizing the effect of uh, the, the weight of the you're minimizing the effect that the weight of the ball has on your on your balance during release okay it's kind of hard for me to put it in so I, I hope i hope the message get across so uh so as a coach i'm constantly improving i'm learning new things all the time so this is also something that i've recently learned new uh some new knowledge that i learned from experimenting with my students as well so uh this is why it's good to stay subscribed so for any of you viewers who are not subscribed uh no please subscribe and uh, follow my future videos as well because i'm sure that uh, the more the more experience i get as a coach the better my video analysis gets and uh, the more uh, the more useful knowledge that I'm able to share, right? More efficient, more useful knowledge that I'm able to share with uh, you viewers and other bowlers as well. All right. So, um, blah, 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 blah. okay. So I went on a rant about that, right? Uh, the the two more body to us, right? So we talked about it. Okay. So we're going to talk about his release, right? So during release, we will see that actually Adam's ball isn't that powerful so i'm gonna like maybe zoom uh zoom out back to like normal view right okay but his shot is decently quick because he's able to fully extend his elbow but you can see that it's not it's not too strong right as compared to maybe like a better a more like a more experienced two-hander or like especially if you compare with like the professionals right like pros like Kyle Tru, uh, Anthony Simonson, Jason Belmonte, his shot is definitely nowhere near as strong. Uh, in terms of ball speed, it's maybe or close, but not fast enough. But definitely uh, in terms of ref rate and the power, it seems like you can you know you can see the refs on the ball. But if you look at like uh, experienced pros like Oscar Palema, Jasper Swenson, uh, Belmonte, right? You can't really see the rotation of the ball because your ball rotates so fast. So you can see definitely that Adam's shot here rotates a little bit slower than the professional. So what I believe Adam can do uh, better is that he should actually accelerate and drive his bowling ball more during the downswing. So obviously one, to, to help that, right, to have his swing a little bit faster and to help him to drive the ball a bit better on the downswing, uh, first his uh, bowling, his non-bowling hand needs to get positioned in front of the ball rather than what he's doing now, which is like beside the ball, right? It's on top and beside on the top left corner of the ball. So the non bowling hand should be positioned in front of the ball so that he has a, his swing will be, he can swing his ball more confidently and he can have a faster swing. So with a faster swing, he also needs to accelerate the ball on the downswing, which is right here. So when your ball is here, right, at the top of the swing, I would suggest the, bow the bowlers, right, to imagine, the two handers to imagine keeping your hand behind the ball and then driving your ball downwards, uh, sort of like driving your ball forwards, speeding up the swing and into the speed up into the swing and the release. So you can see here that Adam actually doesn't really drive the ball during the release. Maybe I can, uh, can loop it around here and play it here. Okay, I'm going to repeat again, repeat again here. So he kind of drop, he kind of drops it into his swing. Yeah, kind of. He he no, I say he kind of he kind of drops the ball in the lane instead of driving the ball into the lane, right? Like it's just dropping it normally, like with the natural speed of his downswing, instead of speeding up and accelerating the downswing. Okay, so I am using you know, one of my own videos. So this is one of my own videos. Uh, like I'm doing a sliding drill. But uh, you can see clearly here that I am actually accelerating the ball on my downswing. So this is me doing a sliding drill. I was working on actually straightening my elbows during the downswing, which uh, I've actually managed to do. But you can see that on my downswing, I kind of, I sort of accelerate. I kind of speed up and accelerate the ball into my downswing, right here. So at this moment, going like right at this moment, speed up, speed up speed up okay so this is what i'm i'm saying like bowlers like adam and Ari should actually practice like they should practice speeding up their ball speeding up their downswing and accelerating the ball forward so this is this is what i suggest that they do so it's, it's doing when the ball goes down so the point where i accelerate is actually right uh right here right when the ball is going into the downswing 
So when my ball goes in the downswing, I managed to straighten. So I, I did uh, some pretty conduct conducive practice. So I managed to straighten my elbow. And then from here, I accelerate the ball, right? Into the downswing and forward. So that is the point where the, the bowler should try and accelerate. Yeah, so you can see my hands go into a blur, into a quick blur at this moment, because that is where I speed up and accelerate. Then you can see that as I accelerate through, um, yeah, so you can see that as I accelerate through, my fingers also clear the through the ball faster. So that gives me more ref rate as well. Gives the two-hander a little bit more ref rate and a little bit more ball speed. So this is the kind of dynamic movement that uh, new bowlers like Adam and RFU actually practice. Okay, so I think that actually covers everything. So I'm really impressed with Adam. Like um, if all he has, you know, uh, if he has no coach and if all he has all the fundamentals that he displays here, right? Uh, just from watching my videos, then I, I'm really glad. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think I can take all the credit. You probably know both RF and Adam probably studies a lot of other two-handers as well, like probably Kyle Troop and other professional two-handers. And they probably learn a lot from that too. But his fundamentals are really solid. I'm really impressed with his, uh, know the state of his fundamentals as a two-hander. I think um, part of it is that maybe Adam doesn't get a good slide, maybe because he's using house shoes. Like it might be house shoes because maybe he doesn't get a good slide. But he might be able, the first investment that uh, Adam can do is uh, probably to get you know, a decent pair of bowling shoes, like maybe some budget bowling shoes. Um, they can be, uh, because they are in Malaysia, right? So they're using Ringgit. But if I, in USD terms, like a budget pair of bowling shoes, entry-level bowling shoes would cost probably around 50 to maximum of 70 USD. Then, uh, yeah, and they can literally last you for like a year, two years, or even three years, right? If you're okay with it if you're if you're bowling even if you're bowling frequently like you're bowling once a week twice a week the bowling shoes will actually last you for quite a bit of time i remember my first pair of bowling shoes lasted me at least two to three years before i decided to like go for an upgrade to like a good pair of uh, dexter bowling shoes with like interchangeable soles and all that so yeah so go for a budget entry pair of bowling shoes so you should invest in bowling shoes before you invest in like more bowling balls and uh, yeah, then as if Adam can like keep working on it, like tilt his upper body to the right, keep his uh, bowling shoulder under his head, and most importantly, accelerate the ball on the downswing so that he get uh, even more ball speed and ref rate, then he'll be a really good two-hander, right? Uh, obviously, he has also practiced his uh, finishing uh, the balance arm uh, discipline. He has to keep his balance arm straight. Like here, you can see here that his balance arm is, is not there, right? To keep his balance arm straight during the release and after after the finishing position parallel to the ground and all that so if he's able to like master all that then yeah he can be a really good bowler and then as i mentioned in like boyd's uh boyd's bowling channel review where if you find that your physical game is really like pretty good right there's not much you can do the improve on your physical game then it's time to improve on like the the accuracy aspects of your game like make sure you practice different lines. Obviously you need to practice your spares. Sparing is most important. So if your physical game is really good, you work on your spares first, right? Practice your pin 10 lines, pin seven lines. I haven't talked about those sparing lines in this channel yet. I'll probably no make videos of them in the future because sparing is so important. So practice your sparing lines, pin, uh, go diagonal, right? When you uh, spare your, your single and double pin spares and uh, make sure you're really good. Spend a lot of time grinding out the spares and then go for target practice, right? You want to practice like this kind of lines. Uh, you want to practice your 5-5 five, five line. 5-5 five, five line for competitive uh, tournament conditions. If you're playing like short patterns like Wolf, um, I think Wolf and like Stockholm patterns, 32 feet, 35 feet short patterns. Uh, usually they have to use a pure urethane ball and ball on the outside like 5-5, five, 3-3, five, three, three, right? Ball 3-3, three, 5-5, three, five, five. you want to practice these lines. You want to practice your your typical lines, which is like between second and third arrow, which is this line. And then you're having a break point around board five to board eight. Then uh, after that, you want to practice lines that is between third and fourth arrow. They're having a break point to about board 10 to board eight. So this kind of lines. And then you obviously want to practice deeper lines that go through the fourth arrow. That means uh, having a break point around board 10 to board eight, but crossing the center arrow, which is a uh, 20th board, deeper lines. And uh, the last one you want to practice even deeper lines across the fourth and fifth arrow, 
uh, having a break point around board 8 to board 10 but your your ball is crossing the arrows at around board 20, 23 to 25 right which is like uh, in between 4th and 5th arrow to 5th arrow and then finally I mean if you want to practice lofting your ball yes you can but it's not too conducive that is practicing uh, having your ball hitting at the 6th arrow um, not too realistic so for beginner bowlers and even beginner competitive bowlers is not something that I recommend them to practice because lofting does damage the lanes on the alley so bowling proprietors do not like to see people loft and throw and like have the bowling ball smash on their lanes right they, they, they really dislike that so I would not suggest anybody to, to practice lofting okay uh, so those, that's that so practice all the different lines and then you go into the, the for no high level boulders you go into the technical aspects of uh, the tactical sorry the tactical aspects of bowling like what ball to use what layouts to use uh, when, when to use symmetrical balls when to use different ball surfaces when to use like a pearlized ball when to use a solid ball when to use a hybrid ball uh, then when to use like 500 grit on your bowling ball compared to when to use 1000 grit on your bowling ball compared to when to use like uh, a shine a shine ball which is like 4000 grit shine uh, when to use a bowling ball that's 2000 grit shine 2000 grit sanded stuff like that tactical aspects then how are you going to break down the lanes so when you bowl on the lanes let's say you bowl start here how is this going to break down the lanes how is it going to affect the ball reaction when you use like a pure urethane ball like a purple hammer or like a pitch black or black hammer how is your shot going to affect the lanes why do you need like such a uh, low surface grit why do you need to send your urethane balls to like 500 grit or like 360 grit right uh, pure urethane balls and then when you shift in what is the kind of lane adjustments that you need to shift how many boards you need to shift at the arrows compared to how many boards you need to shift at the at your approach right at where you're standing so those are all the you no know, te technical and tactical aspects of the game that I haven't even touched on yet because they are too advanced for most of the most most bowlers even uh, only you no know, only the bowlers who are really good at their physical game they go into like competitive tournaments then these are the things that the coaches they go go through with their bowlers and they teach them okay so uh, thank you very much for watching this video again I have more viewers submitted clips uh. Um, I earlier like a few weeks ago, uh, I think a few days ago, I actually received uh, another updated video from uh, Chris, one of our earlier uh, one-handed thumbless bowlers who's going full two-handed and he sent me a video just to update on his progress so I can do another re video review on that. So for you know, anyone who's still hanging around at this point of the recording, it's uh, been 40, 40 plus minutes long. Um, if you want to submit any of your um, videos for review feel free to submit them to me via whatsapp via uh, my various social media such as instagram um, facebook i have a facebook group uh, again you can upload it onto youtube and then send me your youtube link so i'll be happy to watch it via youtube as well yep stuff like that so you can always share with me if you're in Sin if you're living in singapore and you like face-to-face -face lessons you can check out my website at uh, bowlingwithcoachcharlie.com then i have my rates there so you can check them out and uh, yeah okay thank you very much for watching and as usual if you ha haven't subscribed uh, please subscribe for you no know, future updates right as I get become a better and better coach I hope to release better and better analysis and a more useful content for you bowlers so hope you can uh, subscribe and then uh, tune in for more uh, even better analysis videos in the going on in the future thank you very much again and uh, thank you very much to you know, the viewers for watching as I mentioned I can't thank you guys enough for Know, watching and even like bowlers like Arif right he gave me a very encouraging message saying that uh, he, he thanks he thanks my videos for you no know, giving a lot of tips and guidance to both him and his brother and uh, I feel very happy you know, to be able to give value to bowlers like this so thanks again and uh, we will see you guys next time